Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! <laughs> oh, welcome to TFYLP. Uh, we have a pre-record uh, going tonight this week because I will be on vacation. Uh, so uh, I am joined tonight by Mr. Starscream. Pathetic fools! There's no escape. And uh, and Rob. Hi. And I'm Lucas. So. Uh, Oh, Paul, you know. Oh, it's Paul, not Mr. Starscream. Oh, there you go. So, uh, so yeah. So tonight we're going to be talking about giving our take on the new masterpiece, uh, Starscream, um, and kind of what we think about it. We wanted to do it a couple weeks ago, but I know Rob, you hadn't gotten yours in. I think you, I think you got yours in last week, and then we just hadn't couldn't coordinate quite yet. So figured we'd do it tonight. Word. So. But, uh, but yeah, it's, I, I feel like that the Starscream in general has been a, a little bit of a lightning rod in the, the fandom. There's been a lot of, you know, what masterpiece release isn't these days That's because true. it has this prestige. The masterpiece line has this prestige around it and it's very expensive. And, you know, I, th I, th I think we've mentioned this before. I'm not the first person to say it by any means and probably not even the first time on the show, but like. People hate what they can't have. And so, you know, and like anything that's mass produced, it's got flaws. Literally everything ever made has flaws. And so they're going to gravitate on those because they were never going to buy it anyways. Right. And that's and that's fine. You don't have to like the line, it, you know, <laughs> like give up the prestige. Like, don't worry about it. You, you don't like it. Cool. Move on instead of finding crap to hate on. But, you know, that's also the Internet. Well, you hit the nail on the head. It's the. It's the lack of it's the wanting it, but not having it, you know, and yeah. you have to you have to basically convince it's, it's psychology. You have to, like, convince yourself that it's OK that you don't have it to get over the pain <laughs> that See, lasts I, for 36 hours. I feel like, you know, I was talking to Peter about this today, too, that I feel like it's kind of like the paradox of choice here with these figures that if we only had one masterpiece star screen that came out, like that's the standard. That's the only thing that you'd ever get. You would be happy because you're like, Oh, this is like, this is it. This is, you know what I always wanted. And that's probably the, the feeling that you had when MP01 came out or even MP10 or, you know, whatever, like with the new line and whatnot. But the fact that now we're getting, you know, the fifth version of, of various characters and like no physical toy is ever going to be perfect. And so like, because of that, every one you kind of nitpick and you're like, well, you know, I kind of like this little bit more on, you know, the, uh, you know, on this masterpiece star scream. I kind of like this bit a little bit more on the, like whatever the make toys party version, make toys one. And I kind of like that a little bit more, but there's no, there's no certain one that's like, oh, this is like perfect. Like this is how I would do it. But then the problem I mean, this with one's that is pretty damn close for me. the The problem with that is is that everyone has a different like thoughts as far as like what's the perfect star screen or like whatever character might be. What's the perfect thing for them? You know, like I might want the toy version. You might want the cartoon version. You know, whatever it may be. Um, you know, kind of thing. So, I mean, this is the perfect version to me. It's, I was it's waiting for him to break flawless, up that goddamn flawless. stupid thing. It has not put it got, away. It has put not it gotten away. out of this mode since I got it. <laughs> I'm sure that's the case. <laughs> and, and so, for any of our audio listeners, uh, Paul was showing MP44 uh, Optimus Prime with the Starscream head that came on it. And the yeah, it, it, I, I don't know. I, I just kind of want to clear the air quick, you know, like, um, I've, I've seen some people call this uh, version 3.0 Starscream. And I guess you could consider it 3.0 considering that MP44 
was potentially version 2.0. But um, exhibit A is the fucking box! 2.0! 2.0, guys! Do you guys know how versioning works? No, you don't. You don't. It's the third Starscream to be released in the Masterpiece line. Actually, it's not. If you count the Ghost one, it's like 14. But this is the second all-new ground-up creation that is Starscream. I mean, I understand the confusion because, like, the fandom has, you know, when they were talking about, hey, I'm selling MP Starscream, they're like, oh, do you mean the green screen version one or, like, the later, like, actual Starscream colored but with the stupid sword thing so people started in the fandom using that to say 1-0 and like no it's the 2-0 one that's like the walmart one that was nice or something right um like i get how that happened but we have an official label now you know this is officially the 2-0 you know that other ones were just variations on a theme i mean the, but... the problem the problem is that they they are kind of flippant with the versioning if they're going to start mm-hmm. doing it like like mp is it 12? I don't even know any. It was MP11 was the coronation version. Yeah, MP11. Like that was like 1.5, 1.7 if you want to it count. Was 1. The, 1.7, yeah. <laughs> so, like, like that's how versioning actually works, and it, you know then they have dots after the the point if if you really <laughs> want to get nuts. But most people aren't in software development, so they don't understand how that really works. It's called semantic versioning. If anybody wants to Google it. Thank you. So Thank you. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a. Uh, <laughs> Major minor patch. That's the order. And so uh, if you have a breaking change, you change a major versions. And this is a breaking change from the old star screen. It's um, a major patch. Yeah. He's got it's the it's all new. Now, is, is that an actual cockpit on his chest there, Paul, or is that a fake cockpit? Okay, it's a fakey. I, you know, and when I found out there was going to be a fake cockpit, like, I had I had I think I had to take a few minutes and think about it. You know, when I fi- when I first realized like, oh, it's a fake cockpit. You know, just cuz I I've, I've always you know this prime started the faux parts thing early on and we you know, we've been living with it for a while with the, with the grills. I still will not accept the ultimate masterpiece Optimus Prime until they get rid of the fake parts. And this Star Scream is kind of the same way. However, after I transformed it, that fake cop cockpit is the, like literally the final step of the transformation, and when it when it finally comes out, it's actually really cool because the other cockpit is right behind it, and you can see through it and see it, and it gives it it's just a kind of an interesting um, effect. So you know, it, I like it. I, I, I'm actually into it. It's still a fake cockpit, but I'll accept like, it. Paul and I were talking about this a few days ago, and like I used to be super anti uh, fake parts, faux parts. Um, like I think, I mean, obviously it's like MPO one did it right, but I remember like when Trax hit, like it has the dummy roof on his chest or whatever it is. Like it it has a couple of faux parts. I was like, ah. Oh. Um, but in time, I've I've come around to it with like with Prime's grill and with Starscream's cockpit, like. There's not really a way to make stuff stretch, right? Like there, there are at some point some limits to what you can effectively do. You know, what I mean, it may be in ten years when we get version actual version three. Who knows what we'll have invented by then, right? But it's really hard to do. But what I really like is they did it here with him, and they did it with Masterpiece Cheater as well, who has the fake uh, beast head chest. Because it's totally different than how the beast head looks. Like there's nothing. There's not really anything you can do. Is they, the engineering shows as Paul was saying here. Like that's not an engineering concern. They made it go in the same spot. They're like it just needs to look different once it's here. And so that's what they've done, which they did with MP Cheetor. And I think we're seeing that more now, at least in the masterpiece line, when they need to do faux parts. And I think that's pretty awesome. Because like it, it, it helps trick my brain a bit. That it's not just a total cop out. It's like we could do it. It just would look wrong. So here's how we're going to deal with it. I, I mean, it, I think it, the thing is, is with it being a uh, cartoon representation, like it's almost impossible to have the same parts if you're going to, you know, be, like modeled after the cartoon. At least for 80s cartoons where they just right. cheated all over the place. It's not like, you know, the, the Netflix shows where they're just fucking CAD models with the ports on there even, you know, <laughs> screw well, holes. And it led to this interesting piece uh, this like flap this like yeah. thin flap that like flips over and 
covers up the cockpit in jet mode, which, you know, it, it would have, I would have been way more pissed if like that didn't happen. Yeah. Because then you would have had, you would have seen the two cockpits. Like you always do with Optimus, you see the grill on the underside and you're like, what the, yeah. um, it's it just, it it's neat. And that's, what's cool about this being an all new transformation. You know, if they've done the seeker, how many times have you transformed the seeker mold in one iteration or another? It's the same shit every time this one, you know, it's like, it's like, well, let's give them, let's give you something different. Let's give you something completely different in ways you've never seen. And I think it's a huge success. I mean, look at these sexy legs. There's no crap on this. I mean, okay, there is this weird, like, latch yeah. there. But I'll take it. I mean, that's, that, that is a great, they, they made some real good solutions here. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a backpack, but he's a jet guy. He always does. And I think they minimized it quite well. Like, they, they sort of hid a lot of the bulk. Because you can like yeah. flip the wings and stuff. Yeah, it's not like a bumblebee issue where it's just like right. you kind of crumple it up and you say, okay, it's good enough, I guess. Like, yeah. no, everything is purposeful with this. Um, and to be clear, just because you know we kind of just started in the middle. Like, I love it. It is. Is it perfect? No, nothing ever is. And you know, we'll get into some of that. Um, but overall, I, I love it. I think it. I had all the make toy seekers. This blows it away. I was always annoyed by the make toy seekers. Because of their, I thought their faults were more glaring, but it was better than MP11 mold or whatever, right? You know, and right. and that's not even a knock on Takara. Like people, some people are mad, like, oh, why are they repeating characters? It's because like, it's been over a decade. Right. <laughs> you, you know, like these, we're talking like the top five characters to the point like when third parties are outdoing the original ones, like of course the car is going to respond to that be, because they're again that like top billing characters. We're not talking about like you know a new version of some C-list character. No. You know, it, it's, it's the big guys. Things have changed enough that it's it's warranted. Um, and mainline, how many times have these five characters been in the mainline? 18 right. billion, right? You know, it's just, it's an easier pill to swallow when it's a 20 to $50 toy than a, you know, two to $400 toy. Like, but it's been a decade, guys. Let's, uh, <laughs> you know, the times have changed and gotten better. 18 right. billion. Man, I'm missing a few right. in my collection. Well, no. I mean, that's the thing is, is people get mad and they're like, oh, why did you release Starscream again instead of, like, whatever name your D-list character? And you're like, well, because Takara likes making money and they can see yeah. that, like, putting out a new Seeker Mold is going to make them a lot more money than, like, Random Joe, you know, whatever, yeah. 1987 And Trailbreaker character. or Hoist, you know, which... Right. This allows them to do so, like we got a hound, and that's because they did a prime before that, right? You know, it's like you got to kind of alternate that um, to keep the line going. And honestly, to, honestly, Takara Tomy like benefits from making people mad in that sense because th their goal is not to like make the per make everyone happy; it's to sell toys. Yeah, and it, sometimes by making people mad, that's actually the result. Um, but yeah, I. I transformed this and I absolutely loved it. The engineering, I think, is just flat out brilliant. Um, like the Make Toy Seeker, because that's the real comparison. MP11 is not a real comparison anymore. Like, like that, it's it's a different age. Um, the Make Toy Seeker was the standard transformation. There's that part on the tail fin that's the wrong color plastic on every single one of them. Like, you know, he's got like the blue tail fins. He's got a gray piece in the middle because it fold it folds in half. Um, and every one of their secret molds has that on the different sprue that's a different color. It just really stands out in plain mode to me. And then, like, in bot mode, he's got the divots in the thighs, which I thought always hopped out. And the gaps in the forearms, which those aren't as big of a deal. Um, but, like, it's got those little things that always jumped out to me. And then the cone, the cone head was always popped off. It was That was pretty crappy yeah. engineering. I um, mean, then, of course, Sunstorm was a nightmare. That thing was a quality control nightmare. But it's still, like, you know, a gajillion dollars on the aftermarket because... You know, that's how that goes. But um, the engineering on this is awesome, which was nice to see because I really did not like RC, which we never talked about that. Um, that's the that's really the only like recent masterpiece that i had been very disappointed in. But um, so it was nice to see this come out, which didn't have some of the quality issues that Hound had. Like Hound's quality issues were much more uh, ramshod. Some people do have issues here with the uh, uh, cracks, some like in the feet somewhere. Um, yeah. That doesn't seem like super widespread, but it's the internet. So you know, if five people get it, it's like everyone has it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. But but it's it's enough. It's definitely valid. But yeah. it isn't everyone. But it is definitely valid. And the ankles aren't super great. Like the yeah. Connected to the ankles aren't super great. That should be ratcheted or it should be stuck and use the ratchet underneath or something. Um, but I have zero problem getting him to stand. It's not an issue. I, I want to comment on that because I found that if if you pull out the the landing gear things yeah, like that, they do kind of like snap in and re- and provide a little extra tension. Because mine, like when I stood it up, it was like, it was want to do the Michael Jackson moonwalk, like mm-hmm. lean. I was like, oh man, and I, I knew ex- I, as soon as I got out of the box and saw that happen, I was like, can't wait to see the posts about this. Yeah, <laughs> which they're 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 out there every day, but I did inspect mine, and I don't think I have the cracks. I've seen plenty of pictures with the cracks, but like my my response to those people is always like, there's always jet mode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's as widespread as I mean, I wish we had numbers, right? You know, we don't have numbers, but I get it's a star scream. I feel like they sold a lot of them and it's not that widespread unless like literally everyone's was, was having it. But like it is valid, though. I don't want to like sound like I'm being right. dismissive, but I don't think they're like, oh, it's a masterpiece again. There's new stuff broken. I was like, no, like to me, the only one that really missed the mark was Hound because that really... was extremely widespread. Yeah, the the thing that's hard for for me is is that Takara doesn't offer replacement parts like the third party companies uh, de, uh, do. Which is shitty. It's and, shitty for a high end boutique. And like a lot of people are getting these straight from Japan instead of you know like if you get them from a U.S. retailer, like they might uh, be able to work with you and try and source you know some replacement parts potentially. <laughs> But, like, a lot, you know, if you're getting it from, you know, Ami Ami or wherever, it's like, you know, you may not even be able to communicate what the issue is to, the, you know, the people over there in Japan. And so, like, that's the thing that's, you know, the same thing with Hound uh, as well, that it's like, oh, you know, I don't really mind if, like, there's a little bit of QC things. I mean, that's going to happen with any any toy. But it, it really sucks, like, if you're going to get a toy that is going to break on you. Like, that, that really does... You know, it's kind of like... I mean, this isn't a case of just like, oh, you're going to pick it up, play with it, and it's going to break. That yeah. That's not the case. Like, again, any high-end collectible, you know, you, you you don't force stuff. It's not like a Hasbro Walmart product that is made to take a little rougher wear and tear, right? Um, but, like, I don't have to use super kid gloves on this stuff either. You, you know, but it's not like it, that level. It'll be interesting to see, because I felt like the same thing with Megatron... Uh, back in the day where like the early reports there was people like oh he's he's really fragile and gonna break and whatever and like no he's just really complex right i never (laughs) felt like that like i never felt like i was ever gonna break him the only thing that i would ever say with him is is that you know and this is true of like almost every masterpiece now is is that all the paint that's on him that if you transform him you're gonna get some you know little paint wear and, and you know things here or there are you talking about 36, the gun? Yeah, 36. he's talking about 36. Yeah, but like okay. early on, there were some people that were like, oh, I broke mine. Like, you know, and so people were flipping out. I mean, that's, that's a complex s- toy. Sausage fingers. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, like, and let's be clear, like, the closest comparison, I think, is um, like, you know, Solo Chogokin line from Bandai. Like, they're, they're different lines, right? But that's another high end transformable robot toys. You got to handle those things carefully as well. And, Takara stuff is now priced kind of in that line, but like I have Gunbuster and I've had him for a while from and like his fingers crumbled to dust. You know, like that's mm. that's just what happened. You know, over time I didn't even do anything wrong there. And I've talked about before my God Mars broke with me due to shitty engineering. And so now I just don't transform that shoulder. Because <laughs> it's gonna do it again. You have to do it a very certain way, or it's just gonna have the pressures in the wrong spot. If um, if I had to equate the the QC quality of this toy it would probably be on par with Beast Wars Megatron Masterpiece, where, like, some people were getting the crotch cracked, you know. Some saw it, some didn't, you know, right out of the box. Yeah. It it didn't mean your toy was, like, broken, okay? Like, yeah. It sucks. And the crotch is actually... I would say the QC on Beast Wars Megatron was worse. But I haven't heard anyone t- utter that broken crotch Megatron speak in, like, a year and a half. So... Everyone will get over this. It's just the ankles are how they are. And hopefully hopefully it's just like the screw was the wrong gauge or something. And like maybe they improved that for Skywarp and Thundercracker. You know? We'll see. Yeah, like, we, you know, we'll see. I'm throwing stuff at yeah. the back here. You know, it's one of those where like like Hound is 
another case of, I think, amazing engineering. But I don't really want to play with the figure anymore because I think I inspected a while back and I saw a couple of cracks show up. Like, you know, like it just sitting there. I didn't have them originally just sitting there and I think they cracked, but I probably need to look at it closer. But it's, you know, some people are like, well, they should do a reissue of it. And other people are like, oh, I'll be mad they made me buy the first one. It's like they didn't purposely make a bad one. <laughs> you know, if they make it better later on, it's because they're trying to improve their product. Like I get how how people feel, but it's not a bait and switch. It's just they made it this way, and that's what it is. And um, U.S. retailers generally also aren't super good with Takara Masterpiece. So if there's been reports of some of them just being like, well, they all are that way, so we can't help you. <laughs> you know, or maybe like right. you can get a refund for it, but you're not going to like be able to exchange it for another one until you find one you're happy with. Like that's – they generally won't do that. Right. Um, okay. Unless it's literally just like a one-off like, oh, it broke in half. And even then they'll probably be like, what would you do? <laughs> you know, it's an expensive figure. What'd you do? No kidding. Yeah, like, like but bumping. it does suck that Takara has no no after after sell service because Bandai does. If you're in the U.S., you go through Bluefin, and you, know, you got to keep on them. It took me a long time to get my God Mars fixed, but I got it. Um, and a lot of the good third party companies, you can get stuff, but not all of them. Some of them are crappy, and you won't get anything either. Yeah. But like, Fans Toys and X Transbots are are both good. Um, yeah, MMC's I've, got, good. I've gotten parts from them. MMC is good. Yeah. And it's getting, let's just say, like, MMC and Fans Toys in particular are known for being high quality. They have stuff that breaks, too. You, oh, you know? Okay. Like, I, like, I've broken toy stuff on them, <laughs> you know? But it's usually my own fault. Um, you know, it's usually nothing catastrophic either. But, but yeah, anyways. It, er, you know, earlier you had touched on, you were talking about the price of, of the figure. And, and I actually think that the price is pretty reasonable. I mean, these Seekers... When MP11 came out and like the subsequent seekers and whatnot, those were like two hundred dollars, and that was how many years ago, you know? And like the fact that this the is coneheads yeah. especially were like two twenty oh. from the the Takara Tommy Mall exclusives or whatever, um, and those man those plummeted hard in the oh, aftermarket, yeah. which was yeah, funny. Um, Part of I it, I think, was the QC those. on those though. You know, like they had the, were... some of them had the shoulders issues. Like that's like yeah. a straight up everyone's shoulders were screwed up or like half the batch of the shoulders were screwed up or something like that. I think mine are still wrong. I never bothered with it and it's fine, but you know, it, it was definitely a thing. They also waited way too long to release those. Yeah. Like, I don't think the cone heads of this mold are going to come out. I don't think it'll happen, especially not anytime soon, but mainly because of how those other seekers sold, you know, they were clearance and then they were super, low on ebay and they still are today um and like even make toys couldn't get there <laughs> you know they've done like one of them well you know it's, it's funny though you know these companies have trouble with that and then uh the conans from toy world uh that came out i don't know if you remember those yeah the those half those knockoffs. Clearance pretty hard too not the amazon ones though baby yeah, those no, that's, that's the thing. Oh, it's yeah. funny. Time ones. <laughs> that, that's the funny thing is, is those, like, somehow the mainline ones are crazy. They're nearing the new masterpiece cost yes. <laughs> for a, a Four, much. 400 bucks for a set of those. A friend showed me a receipt today. <laughs> oh, boy. So, beware. Are you kidding me? Jeez. No, no, that's I'm not. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy. But yeah, I, think this... th I, I think they're better off just doing some of the never released. Like decos of, of this, you know, like like, you know, Sunstorm obviously, but like maybe like Hotlink or Nacelle or something, you know, like some kind of off the wall um, repaints that we haven't gotten before. There's so many seekers they could do whatever they wanted. I mean, they got a lot of run out of, you know, that MP11 base mold or whatever. Um, but you know, it took a long time for a lot of those to come out, and so I'm I'm very curious to what they'll do do next after the main three. I, gotta, I think that'll be interesting to see where they go, if they go anywhere. But I, I, I can't imagine they won't. I've always wanted to, them to make a, an all-gray, like, dead dead one. Like a dead Starscream. Mm. I mean, they are releasing the Coronation set. But, like, I'm not sure how you get that. I didn't like, know that. You ha I think I'd you have to, like, buy... In, you have to be in Japan, obviously. And I think you have to have receipts for all three of the Seekers. And then you can, like send in to pay 30 bucks to get it it's something crazy like that oh, man. i'm sure there'll be a way for u.s retailers to get a hold of it some way but 
that'll it's be... possible Pulse might just do it, you know? Like, they might That'd be fun. have it. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, like, that's the thing that's frustrating to me is, is that, like, do you really have to go through all of that just to get, you know, this, this set? Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's what the requirements are. I don't know why you would do that. Like, if you want to make an accessory and sell it, just fucking sell it. Why do you come? You have to prove you bought all the other three to get a crown now, and a cape. Don't, don't <laughs> quote me on that. I know it's, but there's, it's Rumor Mill at this point. Well, no, there is a, like, they they revealed it. Okay. Like, they, they revealed okay. it early on, but I don't remember the actual translation. Someone look it up, and you know, I don't have time to do it live and give yeah. me the answer, buddy. Sorry, but look yeah. it up. There's a MP52 coronation set accessory pack. So yeah, I do love the engineering on this. You know, as Paul pointed out, you know, they're gone. The tail flaps are gone. We've never seen that before, and like. The big extra wings, they're gone. Like, you can see, yeah. you know, obviously a little bit of blue peeking through, but that's new. You know, this happening down here is new. Um, and I found the engineering really straightforward. Like, the only thing I had trouble with is the cockpit. You have to twist part of it, and that is way too tight. It takes it, which is, that is, you know, a good thing. Like, I don't think Hound would have taken force like that, right? <laughs> but, um that was the like, scary moment. For that me. was the scary moment where, like, I'm looking at like YouTube videos and I'm like, is everybody doing that? And like, a couple people, like, you can just tell the video cuts. I'm like, you sons of bitches. And some people are like, I got to go off camera, you know, to do it. And so I'm like, this is tough the first time, but after a few, it's easy. And by then, it's already easy. And I'm just like, man. But it eventually, <laughs> it eventually twisted. Um, that part is so cool in the transformation too. Like, yeah. you realize there's a notch there for the yeah. nose cone. You're like, wait a minute, I didn't see that before. And you, you have to turn it a specific way, and it goes 90 degrees, so it's actually it's actually not, like, confusing. They could have made it worse, where, yeah. like, it just turns as much as you want, and you have to, like, no, it's an, it. It goes right. one direction, and that's yeah. where you want to go with it, which is nice. That's good engineering. And yeah. you actually, so, like, you know that you pull the nose cone off, and you, like, see the radar, you know, that, that thing that's on the front of the jet. Like or that you actually, bend the nose cone back, and you see the radar. That's, like... They Every implemented that. Fee. They implemented that into the transformation, and uh, it was just kind of it was kind of cool. The whole cockpit thing, you know, like there are all these. The transformation kind of crescendos to this like ending. It's it's a really cool cool process. Like the first masterpiece moment to me was when you pull out the legs, and, like all these little bits on the back of the the backs of the knees sort of happen, and it like you get that really nice masterpiece clicky thing, you know mm. that. That's what you really want when you're playing with these toys. It was just, it was super cool. Like you can open the back of the legs and think, oh, look at this mess in here. But like, it just, it just went. Like I wasn't confused. I was like, well, I'll just keep folding things. And it all went in there fine with no issues. I was just like, that's awesome. Why haven't we seen this before? It's so great. Um, I don't know. I was just, I was really excited for it. I still think Takara has excellent engineering, except for RC, but <laughs> that's a different different episode wait for the 2.0 <laughs> what, what, uh, what do you the, think of the, the guns missiles. I was, oh, yeah. jinx like the missiles transform which is cool um i mean it's simple just like the nozzle flips out so you can have the stubby or the long with one piece so that's cool um you know they didn't have to do that nobody would have batted an eye if we had both long and short missiles you know or if they plugged them in or anything else but it's a nice touch um you know, I've heard some complaints about, like, why didn't we get a set of matching blast effects? And I think that's valid, but it's minor. Like, you know, why do we have one of one kind and one of the other instead of, like, where you can have them both set up? Because that's not expensive, but, again, it's not the end of the world. Well, I don't know. I think it, it makes for more dynamic. Like, if you're doing that, it's like he's just not shooting the same thing at the same time. I think it's actually cooler that they don't double them up. Because uh, like, uh, what people were saying is, like, why don't we get four instead of two? So oh, if you okay. wanted yeah. to so do, you do it. Do, so you could do yeah. both. Yeah. yeah. I, I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't have added a lot, but um, I've heard the stand is bad, but I never mess with the stands. Um, I, 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 I had mine set up with it. I don't, I don't love it. I mean, I wish, I wish like it extended. Cause like you can't really get much of a, like it's, it, cl it clips into his back. So like if you want him to like bend over, it's pretty good, but it's it's actually not really tall enough to get him in a good standing pose. So it's more for jet mode. 
And like right. I heard it was the ratchet in there wasn't great for jet mode. Like you couldn't hold a position. And I don't know if that person's was bad or if that was I mean, you know, there is there is no ratchet here. It's just yeah. a friction joint. So. Yeah. I never used the the stands with masterpiece other than black arachnia, so it, it doesn't bother me that much. But you know, if you're gonna put it in there, you should do it right, especially in the masterpiece line. It's it's worth noting for people that care about that, I guess. And and you can't really put any accessories in the bottom, which you know, if you have all the other star screams, the the stand is cool because all the accessories like clip into the bottom of it, and this one. It seems weird they didn't do yeah. that. I think it's because they, it's just the purple version of like the Dinobot stand, I think. Okay. And they just, they just reused it instead of like remolding it to hold the different parts. Yeah. yeah. And it might be a cost thing, potentially. Yeah, they just, they don't want to mold new parts for all of them. Right. I guess. Um, articulation wise, uh, the big elephant in the room is there's no waist swivel. Um, and I love that it's not cut on the front. Like, Make Toys has that cut. It's kind of ugly. Yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't bother me. Um, it's what's, just What's it, the cut? It, like, a cut on the canopy so that it can uh, turn. So it can do You know, which is, swivel. yeah, like, I feel like you can still make this waist swivel without doing that by having the joint below at least a little bit. But at the same point, I never display any of my toys with the waist swivel engaged, really. But, I mean, that, I don't know, that doesn't excuse it. Like, that's, but it has all the other articulation and then some with the great ab crunch. It's got the butterfly uh, joints as well, you know, like really awesome shoulder articulation. And yeah, like, I mean, you can cross his arms completely if you want. Um, and it all looks really good, I think. Really good head articulation as well. Kind of a, a bit of a different approach to it, but it, I think it works well, really well. Finger, The fingers are good too. Like, I think it's all four, uh, right? Uh, do, do you want to yeah, show all some of them. that off on, on camera? Like the See, fingers like the, and whatnot? And... Like, yeah, so. You know, I mean, you're going to find better pictures online than what you can see with my shitty webcam. Right. Um, but, you know, it's the typical, like, at the base of the hand and then one knuckle joint in the middle. Um, and, like, they're slightly curved, so it's not like the super bad typewriter fingers, but they get pretty straight, right, if you want them to. Yeah, it's um, better It's better than 2.0 here, who yeah. has, like, the, you know, the gang gang finger articulation, you know. Yeah, so it's an uh, improvement. I think the, I think the thumb kind of sucks because it's it's permanently fixed at a weird angle. It's not like on a ball joint where you can twist it or anything. Um, but again, I, I don't find it. These are nitpicks, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. we're, we're 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 doing that, which is I mean, fine. I always I, feel like hand articulation is tough to do. You know, like I a lot of the ones where it's like super articulated, I actually don't like just because they just uh, pop off and fly they everywhere. Pop off and right, right, all that, all that kind of thing. So I kind of want a you know, it to be in the middle anyway. Yeah. Like, I, I think the finger articulation is really nice, although he doesn't hold the master or the Megatron gun for crap. Yeah. I mean, I have that problem with almost every masterpiece toy. Like they, they have, you know, this, this really thin, this, or this really shallow clip that's supposed to go in the hand and you can see what it's supposed to do and you can make it work. But then as soon as you turn your head, it falls out. Like it's almost like no, all of them have always been that way for me. So I have much better luck with the rest of them. I feel like they go in, and usually once I get the hand around it, it's okay. This one is just like it's they're different toys. <laughs> like 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 someone over here made a gun and said, "Ah, eh, we'll put this on there. That'll probably work, right?" This type of post, and then it just doesn't. Yeah, I um, but I, I don't display with that anyways. Work. Yeah. Again, it's one of those doesn't affect my display. But it's weird. Like, how do you mess up a post? Yeah. Well, you, you did. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like the rest of the engineering is so awesome. And you messed up a post for a gun. <laughs> like you had Bob, the intern, work on that part. Um, and he, you know, he, he definitely phoned it in and nobody peer reviewed his work. Um, the others, I don't know. The rest of it's really slick. The faces you know, are I, great. They go in really easy. Faces are so good. There's like... You know, I know Anna doesn't buy Masterpiece for the most part, right? Except for, like, maybe one or two that sneak their way in. But, like, she's always talking about wanting extra faces. They have so many good faces. Like, almost all of them lifted straight out of the movie somewhere. Um, you know, and then just other, like, classic faces that you would expect. It's like, what, five faces or something? Um, six. Not of Darkness. Six. Yeah, they're really nice. Speaking, I speaking of, I just wanted to show this comparison. 
because I've seen someone asked me like on Instagram or something, but like the the heads on MP44 and this one are very very similar. Like this is both the smiling faces. So that's the MP44. Actually, I got a blast effect in there. I can't get in front. There's the, there's the the star scream one. The big difference is that the head com- the, the ears compress on for transformation. Yeah, on MP52. You get that little squishy squishy thing there. Kind of cool. yeah. Now, do you feel like the head is too big for the body? Because I, I almost feel like it's almost a, a little bit, but not not quite. Like it wouldn't bother uh, me, but I was just curious. You know, when you look at that, whatever that um, drawing is of like you know the the human body, you know the uh, I don't know, it's like Da Vinci did it or something, right? Uh, I can't remember what the, it's called. The Vitruvian Man. Yes. Um, you know, it's funny, we got, you know, robots from space, right? But we generally expect them to have kind of humanist proportions, except the heads are always tiny. Like, almost every toy we have, the heads are way too small for the bodies. Um, so when you get one like here where the head is more appropriately sized, it feels like it's large. I think it looks great. It doesn't bother me at all. Honestly, the the smaller heads tend to bother me once I noticed that like five years ago or whatever, seven years ago or something. Um I think it's just it's more in line with how the animation model is and people aren't used to it. And so it's throwing them off. Yeah. I think I think that's what it is. Um, but like that's why they made the ears collapse is because they wanted it to be a larger head to fit that style. But, you know, not, you know, because they could have just made it smaller and then maybe they wouldn't have to compress the ears. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I always felt like the oh. Make Toys one was way too. The head was way too small. It, like, it was, too was way dark. too dark. Yeah. Way too dark. Yeah, whereas this one, like, I, I don't know. I, I really like the the colors of the head and just, you know, like, it seems very bright and you can just tell all the all the different faces and whatnot. You can you can see them well. Oh, and I, some people have talked about this, too. This is neat. Um, You know, the way the wings fold in. Like, there's a bunch of detail in here, which is cool. I will never, ever use it, uh, but it's there. You know, they could have just made it open, boring, gray plastic, but... Not only did they mold it, there's a ton of paint in it, which is just, you know, I don't know. That's cool. But again, that's like the difference, like the Make Toys one where they didn't even <laughs> bother, you know, putting the, the panels on the one side. And then and then like it came later, you know, where you could get the upgrade kit. Yeah. If you pre-ordered all the cone heads, you could like they came they come with it, parts of them or something like that. But again, nobody... I think it's super optimistic that the last two cone heads are going to come out for yeah. them. Yeah, I was going to say the cone and, heads are, like may never come out. Yeah, and for what it's worth, like I'm not like fuck make toys. I hope they don't like make toys. Has been a great company that's made a lot of great figures. I want them to succeed because I like more right. good companies making cool figures. I'm just kind of being realistic. No, it's like I mean, they made I, they made Seekers and it put them out of business. When everybody's always like Seekers are a cash grab. Right. They aren't the cash grab people think they are or make toys would be swimming in money, you know, and instead right. they're trying to figure out how to stay afloat. But those by those releasing make media. Toys, um, those those make toys uh, seekers like overall were like really good figures. They were mm-hmm. very competitively priced at the um, and, and whatnot, too. Um, it's just like some of the choices that they made to make the price point. You're like, I would have. I wouldn't have done it that way, you know, kind of thing. Cause it's like, Oh man, if you would have just done, done that or whatnot. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I That's don't what know. killed like, me is like when, when I got Meteor, it's like, it's a it was so much better than P11. Um, and, and, and it's really good. You know, again, I had my nitpicks earlier, but it's like, you knew that you were going to make at least three versions of this. Why wouldn't you fix that? You know, those, those little things. Cause you're going to make so many of them. It's, and they, I don't know, they just really stuck out to me, but maybe that's me. Maybe other people didn't notice it as much. But. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this one I feel like is a bigger upgrade to me. I don't know. I mean, the MP44 is a pretty huge upgrade too. I don't know that. Uh, like, it's tough to say which one Worlds is apart. the bigger one. Yeah, worlds apart. Like, this is more incremental over Make Toys, but it still just blows it away so much. Like, it's right. um, I sold off my Make Toys, all my seekers for this, and at actually, like, even after eBay fees. Um, like I made a little money 
compared to buying the new ones. And so like when people, it's just really hard to say, oh, Takar's pricing too much when I, when I just made that statement, that's a fact, it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And that's why like fans toys prices are going up. Like costs are going up across the board for everything. Right. Like we've right. seen that. Um, for like even from super seven and you know, other lines. Um, but you know, there's also that if you know your stuff is going to sell for double on the aftermarket, why wouldn't you put it up higher? That's money for you. Right. Right. Like, exactly. I, I, I don't think that the entire internet collective of these people complaining about higher prices are all, um, you know, just super like willing to give their money away to everyone. These aren't people that not everybody's like, I got to maximize profit all the time. But they're also not going to like, well, I'll just leave 50% extra money out there if it was their business, right? That's that's just dumb, especially for – we're not talking about medical supplies, right? We're not talking about insulin shots. We're talking about fucking toys, <laughs> you know, that no one needs to live. Right. Um, I mean, I, I you'd be stupid to not price this – to something looking at what the aftermarket's doing until it, you know, until you met that equilibrium, you're just leaving money on the table. You're dumb. Yeah, you can't. I mean, I don't like high prices too. either. I wish, I wish everything was twenty dollars. Yeah, that'd be great. Right. But you know, I'm just accepting it. I, it's I part mean, of the I game. think the thing it's is, is that you want to make sure though that there's no corners cut when you're paying that premium price. And it seems yeah. like this figure, there's not. Like I, I don't, I don't really see where, you know, like there's paint the all effects. over the figure. Uh, yeah, the blast effects okay. are the closest, like, cut corner, like, like valid guess, cut corner. Like you said, the rest or, like, the stand or whatever. But, like, I mean, whatever. Those are nitpicks, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I don't know. The figure itself, I mean, it's just, it's an incredibly beautiful figure, like, with the paint, like, just all over the it. The paint's I mean, really it nice yeah. on this. Like, I have some paint issues with MP44. A lot of people did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, like, I felt like even by the time, like, Hound came out, they fixed that. You know, they've they've had a rough go since they switched to the Vietnam factories. Like the first one that people really seem to like overall was a uh, RC, at least from a quality standpoint. Like I don't have any complaints about that. I, my complaints are elsewhere right. with her. Um, the quality, she's 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 great. And I think Starscream is also great, except for some people have some issues up in the ankles. Right. You know, and again, I'm not trying to marginalize people that say otherwise, but like I've had no trouble standing him. I don't. I don't know. I don't even have to flip out the heel thingy. I don't. I don't have to do that. He. He just. He stands all right. No more than I fiddle with, literally any other toy to get him to stand. You know what, Rob? To get your second set of blast effects, you know what you do. Buy a second one and then return it. No, you just buy Skywarp. Dope. Oh, I Is already it... have. Uh, like, do they come with the same exact ones? Yeah, but then Thundercracker comes with pinker ones. It's. I mean, that's a little bit hard to no for sure yeah but we'll see once we get it in hand but that's the plan is for them just to be pro i was kind of wondering that like when i was saying it even earlier i was like i wonder if someone later are going to come with the exact same ones and you can just swap them right and go to town it also now that i'm looking at them it looks like skywarp does not have a translucent cockpit it looks like his is like painted over but that could oh. be you know that could just be a, the sample but interesting that'll that'll be weird if that's the case because then they won't look uniform, and that will bother me. Th Thundercrackers. I mean, I'm just looking at the official shots. It's kind of hard to tell. Thundercrackers <laughs> might be clear, but Skywarp's definitely looks like opaque gold. Like it's like brighter. Interesting. What, what color is Thundercracker? Oh yeah, it's totally different. What color is what his cockpit? No, what color is Thundercracker overall? Like, is he a light blue? blue. Is he dark blue? It, he's a light blue with a clear cockpit. Okay. Yeah, so it's weird that, that Skywarp doesn't have the clear cockpit. Like, I don't know why they would do that. What are they looking at that put them in that? It might just be a sample, and maybe they're like, whoops, that's going to be clear. Yeah. I mean, they're usually pretty good with their samples, though. You know, it's not like some other stuff where it just comes out of completely different colors, but... Again, we'll we'll see once in hand. It it'll be fine either way, but it'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, th when you if you, putting those three together, like they're gonna, look, gonna so look so good. It's gonna look amazing. So fucking good. Like just even the promo shots where they're like doing the run from the start of the show. It's like yeah. looks so awesome because that's like burned into the memories of every G one fan. Is like those three dudes running up that chasm. Yeah, you know and. Uh, 
I think we mentioned it before. I'll, I think you've said it before, Paul. Like people like to throw around, oh, you know, this is like a masterpiece and mini masterpiece and, and on all the fun trolling. Um, but it's like, you know, masterpiece is a brand. And that's that's at the end of the day. You know, it, I kind of wonder how we'd feel if they'd called it something else like ultimate. Like would a lot of the Internet arguments die away? It's just, you know, they lo- use kind of a loaded word with masterpiece as a brand name. Um, and that's just kind of been weird how that's changed uh, the talk around it, you know, since MP01. Um, you know, and what people expect out of it when it's, it's its own line with, it's a brand name for them and it means certain things, which has changed two or three times since MP01 where now it's like, okay, it's going to be figures that are super cartoon accurate with really cool engineering and they're going to be painted all over and they're going to have a lot of accessories. Um, you know, it means those things. Your, your shit $20 figure from Walmart doesn't have any of that. So fuck off. (laughs) Right. <laughs> so I, mean, I, I think the thing with a lot of that is, is that the, like Paul kind of talked about this before is, you know, the tricks that they learn over the years they put into new figures. And so like, that's where this is your chug of, star scream in five years and just simplified a bunch. Right. You know? So, so like, that's where there's certain things like cues that they used in masterpiece back in the day years ago are finding their way into mainline figures. And so that's where it's like, Oh, it kind of reminds me of masterpiece, you know, yeah. whatever. And so that's kind of where I feel like it kind of, kind of came from. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I will say that that tracks, it, it takes a, a fair amount, uh, you know, from the masterpiece toy too. And like, it's pretty complex for a deluxe figure. Um, but like by no means would I call it a ma- like it's just not on the same level as those masterpiece cars. It's like just it, it's a completely different figure. As someone who's like almost all the way out of Hasbro stuff anymore, like I buy maybe a few pick and choose things here and there, right? Or like like I'm getting Black Zerk. Who the hell is going to do Black Zerk, right? You know that's cool. Um, but it is still cool to me to see other people when they get those and to see how the masterpiece engineering is kind of simplified and, you know, and pared down to like the essential, like here's the big thing it did, you know, like the, the finer points are going to be gone, you, you know, and just to kind of see how that gets integrated in is cool. Like, what was it? The, like the cliff jumper feet, like were looked a lot like a uh, MP Bumblebee, the 1.0 Bumblebee, you know, it's like, Oh, like obvious where that came from. And that's yeah. cool. You know, it's, it's neat to see how they you know, pare it down and work it into the main line. Um, and, you know, I I mean, maybe we'll be wrong, but I think, you know, the the wings hiding inside the wings <laughs> and the wings folding up in the, in the legs. I think some variation of that will see its way into a, a chug star screen. I mean, some of that, that we is, have is the seen. Parts count, though. Well, so, some of that has happened in like the weirdest of places like that. That last um, little legend the star scream. Yeah. Really? Yeah, the core, the core. Yeah, I think it's the core class, actually. Like some of the like, how the 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 tail fins become like they they're not like hidden by the wings, but they're like up with the wings and got the, it. The fo- a fo- simpler version. Thing. Yeah, but I I actually think I mean who knows the the lineage? I don't really know. Yeah, I mean they may may they may have been independently created at the same time. Who, yeah, I mean, but I, you know, we, I, I they, they told the story before where masterpiece Megatron the first one was made in five days, <laughs> like designed, and that's why it is the way it is. You know, they're not doing that with this line anymore, and I don't think they really did sense that figure. But like, if they wanted to share engineering, there's no way this wasn't in the works for a long time, right? You, you know, and iterate and iterate and iterate. And I think all of them are, you know, which again is the reason why the price. So it, it definitely could have, but maybe it didn't. Maybe it's a completely different team. Who knows? But well, I, somebody I, I knows, think but not again, us. Again, like I don't know, like the older masterpiece figures, like I, like they almost felt like really nice retail toys if that makes sense like there was not a lot of accessories and like you know depending on the figure they may or may not have paint you know a lot of paint on them um and so i don't know like it it just seemed like it was it was a step above like it was like a really really nice you know like retail toy what we're getting now whereas like i feel like these newer masterpiece figures like they're just like there's it's a rocket a to the crap, moon. A crap load of accessories. Like there's a zillion mm. accessories 
and they're they're dripping with paint. There's paint all over these figures and whatnot. And like that's one of the complaints. Like one one of the things that you doesn't like it or draw you don't. me in as much is because it annoys me when I get paint scuffs and chips and whatnot. Um, yeah. You know, to it. So I mean, I I definitely do see where like this these look a lot better. I feel like on the shelf than what those older like the older figures. I felt like were. We're more fun if you're just like as fiddle bots, you know. Whereas like these, MP11 just... was always annoying to me, to be honest. And yeah. like it was effective, and the, the Walmart version especially I thought looked really nice. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> I still like Green Scream just because it's like a one-off that they never. It was like a it's mistake. very unique. It's something Anna should buy. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> it's... it's expensive now. It is very Which expensive. One is this? It is not a cheap. The very first not... masterpiece Starscream, where they, like they made it real world, and so he's like he's he's colored green like the real plane was, oh, and that's God. when it, that's the one you know that had the the knife the... or the sword sheath looking designs yeah, on yeah, it, yeah. you know even though there weren't swords, but like I think you like you're not wrong, Luke. Is it like it was almost like it was a retail toy because they were, like a lot of the early masterpiece figures got Hasbro releases. Um, you know, sometimes with some changes of different sorts. And so I think Hasbro used to probably pull on that a little more of like, hey, we need to release this here too. And that there's no way that doesn't impact, you know, the design of it, right? Um, and then until eventually later, they're like, you know what, like especially with MP44, someone they just started black sleeving it, right? Um, you know, like the MPM line is still, at least I think so, still a retail toy as well. Like, you know, you could... Yeah. Like you found Bumblebee like at Toys R Us, didn't you? Yeah. Like, like when that first happened, and so you know, and the MPM line is also a lot simpler overall than like the G1 stuff. Like not not compl- they're not like you know one step changers or anything, right? Um, but, you I know, they actually think- they've simplified it since those first few releases because really, and MPM three and four were like. To me, some of the hardest to transform toys I've ever. Which ones are those? With. That's uh, Optimus and Bumblebee. I still have never successfully transformed that Bumblebee into robot mode. I cannot get the legs to like work right. So, and like Megatron and Jazz were way more intuitive. Yeah. Way more intuitive, and I, I haven't, you know, obviously I haven't played with the, the new Optimus yet, but I expect that will be this similar, and so was Starscream. Yeah, but those are they're, like they're good, they're, but they are designed with some sort of U.S. retail in mind, right? Which is different price points. Where at this point, these are just like the car is going to go to town. They'll put them up on Pulse. You know, U.S. retailers might. You know, you can still get it distributed through Hasbro, right? With the the black box sleeve thingy on it. Um, but you know, it's not like oh, we need to put this on a shelf at Target. You know, like like some of the others are, and I think that's why. They are fully painted. Like, MBM figures look really nice as well. Like, they put detail on them. Um, but I don't feel like they match what we do with the, we see with the G1 stuff these days or the Beast Wars stuff. And that's why. In my opinion, probably. I don't know. I'm just a dude on the internet. Now, what do you think about the knees? Because, like, that was, that was one thing. Like, the, the gap in the knees, like, I don't know. Like, is it bothering it's not gr- hand or... It's not great, but it doesn't really bother me. Like, uh, I mean, because, like, if you're... Like, he's got this awesome bend in it. Um, like, it'd be nice, like, if this part, like, snapped forward a bit to kind of close that gap or yeah. there was a panel or something. Like, you could have, but it also just really didn't bother me. The ratchet probably could be a little stronger here. But it, it makes that but, noise. It makes that awesome noise. Oh. Is that good? Here's some robot ASMR. That's what will make the channel now. <laughs> I'll feel that. And I mean, it, they feel really nice, but like, I've seen some people fucking taking them, like, holding them by the lower legs and shaking them. Like, look at it. Like, what are you fucking doing? <laughs> like, yeah, almost every toy is going to do that. That's the stupidest test I've ever seen. Yeah. I don't know what these people expect sometimes. It's different if, like, I was holding it and it just went, right? right. You know, but it, like, he stands up. The knee joint doesn't give out. Some people's ankles give out. But yeah, like it's like they're they could be a little stronger ratchets, but but Paul, if an earthquake hits, 
he's going to fall over. It's a piece of crap. Zero out of ten. Would oh, not transform. Sh- oh, shit. My house fell down. Killed all my my collection. It's not a problem. <laughs> hey, we, we had a real world instance of that, I guess, right? Didn't didn't uh, Ryan have, have that issue with his uh, NPM star screen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it was a cat. Ryan she, S? She, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His NPM <laughs> star screen took a tumble from an earthquake and yeah, because I was telling him, I was like, you know, on the one hand, that, that really sucks. On the other, at least if it's going to be a Masterpiece figure, it's like the most clearance one ever, right? You can still get that, like, for 60 bucks on eBay. <laughs> so, you know, compared to some other stuff. Could have. No, you, you still can. I looked when it happened. Yeah. I paid full price for that. If I'd have waited a week, I could have got it for half off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. One time the anti snoozing tax. That's that's so right. rare. I mean, how so yeah, exactly. these days, yeah. How often does that happen? Well, but like the MPM figures at Target, it's almost like a guarantee. However, oh, yeah. I, I I do not think that's going to happen with this Optimus coming out. I think it's going to be that's going to be a feast or famine. Well, Kitty I mean, Cat Optimus. It's going to be a famine. <laughs> I can't believe that they're releasing that with the cat ears. I that kills me that they thought that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to buy the figure. I'm not in the market for that one. I'm like, I buy a few MPMs these days, but I, well, I just I don't know how they thought that was good or, or acceptable. That's... There's a few flaws with that. It, it, it does kind of kill me that there's been, like, years worth of KOs <laughs> that, like, are, I have to admit, they're, they, you know, they're, they're kind of better, you know? Like, right. you can't really deny it. There's, and there's been multiple companies releasing multiple versions of it that look pretty dang amazing and to you know if like you're a purist and you waited to get this you're kind of like oh man (laughs) y'all came in quite under here right and then like some other stuff like uh i got the knockoff uh npm ratchet because i could not stand the colors on the official you know it was just so far off the mark but the you know and again it's it's a knockoff i think they're produced at the same factory you know, or at least the same molds or whatever. Like, usually you don't know the difference if you get it in hand, other than like the fact that the paint's better, and there's a few molding tweaks apparently that also make it better, right? Um, you know, it's just it's it's bizarre. It makes yeah, me wonder, it's a weird world. Like some a comment you made a minute ago there, Rob, about like what is Ma- masterpiece as a brand? What does it mean? What would an, what would another toy line be called? You know, like the 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 movie masterpiece line, which I actually I do. Cons- it's masterpiece, but it's like very much a separate line from the masterpiece. Mm-hmm. It's not like Beast Wars masterpiece, which is still under the masterpiece banner. That is a different brand that is like related. But I could see them creating a new imprint for the movies, maybe like super ultra edition you know that's like just to separate it from this movie masterpiece line because like you said it's kind of a retail thing and i mean how many years did it take us to get this you know, since since 2003 it's almost been 20 years that this line has existed and this this stuff started coming out before the movies like were even a thing we're even like a blurb so the movie like aesthetic has still has a long way, a, a lot of a lot of headroom to grow into, and I could see them like after at like a in twenty twenty seven, which would be a twenty year anniversary, like maybe launching like a super masterpiece line, and maybe they call it like in Japan they would call it like perfect edition or like something. You mean just for the Bay movies? But potentially, and maybe that, and they, maybe that's the success, and they they. You know, then we or do they do like we they wave did? goodbye to masterpiece and find perfect, perfect well, edition transformers. I don't mm. know. One of the things though is I it's almost feel like the MPM line is kind of evidence that like the Takara probably made the right choice in trying to like price up in uh, the the regular masterpiece line because I feel like those MPM figures that it's like like there's. To me, I don't feel like there's as much demand for them because of studio series. Because a lot of people are getting yeah. their fix with that. And the... Jazz, MPM Jazz is really cool. Oh, right. yeah. He's I mean, really not... cool. He's, I think he's probably the, he's the best one I've bought. 
Yes. You know, and I, bu- I bought a couple of the knockoff versions because they were better. I bought a couple of real ones. But Jazz is really cool. But, but like, I'm not going to say, like, certain releases may be better here or there or whatnot, yeah. right? But, like, I feel like it's it's close enough. And I feel like if they were releasing the retail toys that you are, you know, now, and they were still releasing an $80, like, you know, MP car or whatever, I, I think that there would be a fair amount of people that are like, why, why am I going to get that when I can just get the um uh studio series 86 you know hot rod or whatever like why why do i need to get that other yeah that other thing so i it, think the fact think it, that they're yeah i think it comes back to what you were saying earlier you know like there's retail which is here right and then there's npm which is like definitely steps above retail right but it's different than in like what they're doing with g1 and beast wars right. It, right. you know like that's several notches up where if they did a you know perfect edition npm line or just rebranded it or they just, you know, decided to switch how NPM did and honestly probably dropped U.S. retail and those figures doubled in price and then just had a ton more accessories and time spent on engineering. You know, it's like the only G1 MP thing that sticks out like the NPM cat ears on the upcoming Prime is like uh, Ironhide's flaps, side flaps. Like that's the only thing that comes to mind. It's like I can't believe they didn't fix that in engineering, right? And instead what you do, you bought third-party kits that fixed it. Like, it's not like it was an unsolvable feat. Right. Um, but you know, even that was a long time ago and yeah. you know, so maybe this will be NPMs one or hopefully it's not a sign to come for people that really love the NPM line. I, it's I'd just be so, really silly. Curious so too, silly with, with this line, whether or not you're going to see like a new hot rod and ultra Magnus as well. Cause like that ultra Magnus, like, you know, is a really cool toy, especially it's for really the price good. point. But like you could tell, like you know, they had to make it to a price point. And if it would have been a three hundred dollar figure instead of a hundred and eighty or whatever it was figure, he's so huge better? that'd be like that'd be like another four hundred dollar figure. And I don't know if Ultra Magnus can command that, uh, especially when that's still a super cool figure. It would probably just be painted more, and maybe the butt flap would be resolved, which a you know, a third party company did make their own knockoff of it, right? Yeah. Or fourth party, whatever. But that I do think that he can folded have up the butt flap. Maybe. I haven't messed with it in a while. Yeah. It's just still such a cool toy. It is. I love, <laughs> that was yeah, so sweet. I, I have the Delta one. I bought the KFC Delta. That's how I got my Delta. That toy, I don't know. The engineering's cool on, but it's nowhere near as nice as the Takara one. It's some variety, though. But yeah, um, so as you are, Mr. Starscream, out of 10, what would you rate it? Like, you know, this is like, you know, your wet dream. You finally got it in hand. How how do you feel? Like, again, we can nitpick anything, but. I mean, I think it's phenomenal. You know, like, I, I, I didn't even consider the fact that it didn't have a waist swivel until I saw some asshole, like, screaming about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess it. I, I guess it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Like, it di- didn't affect me at all because it does It does so much more than the things it doesn't do. It's really good. And, I mean, if anything to say about the old Starscream masterpieces is that the jet mode, it almost looks like it's the same jet mode as the old toys, which is actually kind of incredible when you think about it. Um, cause it transforms so differently and the robot mode is in, just, uh, leaps and bounds above, but the jet mode, they always kind of got it right. And so yeah. no one ever complains about that. We're just always talking about the robot mode, really. Um, some people complained about the underside of the jet mode in this one. And I'm just like, I'm I mean, just rolling my be- eyes. It's better than the last ones. <laughs> I'm sure you can see his underwear but you can see the, the only reason it matters this time is because it actually looks like underwear where before it like you know just looked like some blocky bits yeah so you know it's, all it's, transformers have metal underwear did you notice like now you did <laughs> it's a diaper <laughs> um i would give it i'm gonna give it a i, I mean a, this is a number rating I've never used before, but like, how about, how about a 9.6? I'm going to give it a 9.6. So nine, 96 out of a hundred. We don't need artificial precision. Sure. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> 96 out of a hundred. I, I really, really like it. Um, I, I can't, I'm never going to be able to give a toy like this a hundred until 
there are no full parts, you know. But that means they got to solve other problems and shit. So, you know, I, this won't be the last time we see a masterpiece seeker. You know, they're gonna. It'll be a while. It'll. I hope it's a while. Like, I don't yeah. want to see another Masterpiece Seeker for a good long time. Like, I want to get to, like, MP100 before I see another one of these damn jets, like, made from the <laughs> ground up. Okay? So, um... And we probably won't even be buying crap at that. Uh, the world will have burnt up, most likely, or we'll just be dead from drinking well, ourselves. Well, we got to get to MP710, at least. You know, because wow. there's... MP711 already exists, so we got a long, get, a long way to go uh, before we actually hit the mark. But who's going to be MP69? <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's coming. We're almost Night, there. Nightbird. <laughs> um, I think it goes I, really well with with MP44 and MP36, and even uh, like Shockwave. You know, they, they look amazing. Soundwave's the one at this point. Soundwave looked so good for so long. He was like, you could. No one complained about him, but you look at him compared to these, he and he's like, he's like, mm, y'all got to fix that. And uh, fans' toys knew that too. Yeah, <laughs> so. and that's that's the thing that kills me. It's like, people are like, why are they redoing? It's like, there's obviously demand for it. Like, are you blind? If you're mad about it, you probably don't collect the line, you know, or at least not the modern version of the line, or you hate the cartoon aesthetic, which is totally valid to not be into that. But that's what the line is these days, you know. And and you got to. That Master Sound Wave is still awesome, right? It is still a super great toy. The it's fun. The cassettes are fun, but aesthetically, it doesn't fit in anymore. I think the Fan Toys one looks great, um, but Fan Toy Fan Toys are even a nightmare to pre-order now. Um, I, I was listening to y'all, you know, to the exclusive show today, and that's something that is, I think. It was some stuff was always hard to pre-order. I feel like COVID kicked it all into overdrive for us old crusty collectors. And to where now, like, it doesn't matter what you're collecting. You know, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, Transformers. And Transformers is so large and has so many different brands. And, like, retail or, you know, Pulse stuff or Masterpiece, third party. Like, everything is hard to do now. And it's just really, really frustrating as a whole. But I'm getting a lot yeah, of cool toys. Yeah, Anna was like, them. Anna was like, oh, I was thinking about getting those fans toys tapes. Like, what do you guys think? <laughs> like, should I go ahead and get them? And I'm like, you missed it. You already missed it. Like, it's gone. Yeah. They're they're all gone. She's like, no, no. It just, like, you know, it just went up on pre-order. I'm like, yeah, no, you missed it. Like, that <laughs> yeah. was that was like t two days ago or whatever. Like, they, they're, yeah. they're sold out. Anna, like, wake up. You were you are asleep. <laughs> yeah. Like the mini box Snoozy. from Fan Toys, you can still get. Um, those haven't been doing. I don't. I don't know what the deal is. Like, did they sell poorly or they make a bunch more? I don't know. Um, but yeah, the other stuff, man, is flying. Like, your best chance is like to follow some of the smaller, like ages three and up, or uh, right. Toy Dojo, like on Facebook, who have been saying we are going to put them up at this time if you want a shot. But like Soundwave and the cassettes at Toy jo Dojo were literally gone in sixty seconds. You know, Nick Cage was there. And it, it was out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it just like I was going to try to get in, get in on that. And then like, I mean, I was working, you, you know, and, and, and it didn't happen. Um, yeah, I, I give it a 95 out of 100. That's where I was. Um, and it's like, OK, it'd be nice to have double the blast effects. It'd be nice if it had a waist swivel. And the ankles could be a little stronger, but like. Like, I, I got complaints, right? But, like, they just make up such a tiny fraction of how freaking awesome this thing is and how much the engineering blew me away. Again, especially coming off of what I thought was a stinker RC. And, you know, and before that, Hound was amazing engineering, but bad quality. And uh, right. Prime was really good engineering. The only really bad quality there was, you know, the hips are a little shaky on everyone's. Yeah. Like, I don't, whatever, however they engineered that. And then, you know, the paint was an issue. Um, I don't think it really broke for a lot of people other than the knees with some people that were, yeah. you know, probably manhandling a little much. But um, it felt that really it's coming together with this. Um, I don't know. It's so great. It's I'm really, really looking cool. forward to others. It's been really cool to be a Starscream fan and get two Starscream releases so close together. <laughs> wonderful. Can I make one more, one more topic on this? 
that we sure, we we so rarely talk about masterpiece. You know, we're running long, and there's so little of us that well, care anymore on this show. In classic premium finish style, I must bring up my my gripe about the new third party Starscream coming out, which is the deformation one. Weird, right? Which looks well. I mean, yeah, obviously you knew why it was coming out. It's, Takara Tomi beat him to the punch, but like. When I first saw that, I was like, why is everyone posting photos of MP52? I didn't even know it existed. And that was part of the reason, too. Like, it didn't. What is it? That? Who is that? It, it looks like it, it just like grinded my gears because I'm like, it looks like the same toy. But I can tell from looking at it that it's the same old boring fucking seeker transformation. So it really doesn't do anything different. And that's what. When I transformed this, I was like, hell yeah, this is what I'm buying. Like, when, when I buy these these Takara toys, they are taking into account the art of the transformation. Like, when, when I've said this a, a bunch of times, you're buying, you're buying the alt mode, you're buying the robot mode, and you're buying the transformation with Masterpiece. You know, that is, that is a piece, that is like the DNA of the release is that process. And that's what's so cool about this is they really went out of their way to make sure it wasn't the same old crap. And that's what you'll be getting if you don't want to pay for this one with its crappy ankles and it's no waste tilt. You can just, you might as well get the Make Toys one, but you probably already have it. And they're going to buy another one called Deformation, which is the worst <laughs> name of a toy line ever except for SND Toys. So, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Good the, luck this, with your bullshit. But the, you got the TFW. plenty of these. The TFW thread on that figure was only started on June 10th. So, like, this is a pretty new announcement, right? And, like, the figure looks done, which is also weird. It feels like I think they were trying to slide under the radar. Um, and it's, like, there's a few, like, super minor things that you m might say look better than this one. But, you know, a lot of it's going to come down to how the engineering is different. Yeah. But then a lot of it looks worse. You know, and a lot of the things that you might say, hey, that's, okay, like, there isn't as big of a knee gap. You know, but who cares? Like, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's not it's not making I, up for how much better this figure looks. But, you know, if some people wanted another Masterpiece figure. I assume this is, I don't know what this is going to be priced. I bet it's like around 150 or something. Right. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't that, get that's it. That's what I, I figure yeah. is, is that this is going to be for the people that really want a new Masterpiece Starscream and can't afford it. So they're going to get this instead. Yeah. I mean, it does some cool stuff in that. It also hides the wings and the tail fins, um, like completely. Like the Make Toys ones, I always peeked out, and it, it just it it was a good effort, but it wasn't great. Um, so it gets that. This like, looks this looks boring to me. Like like it, is it does very, have some it doesn't cool have, things, it doesn't have but, character. I, I don't know what it is. This looks like it walked off the show and it has tons of character. When, when this looks look like a boring cash in. When you look at this one from the back, it looks like it's made of. It looks like it's a paper like fold out. Or something <laughs> like it, it, like a cardboard toy, and, and I don't want to. I mean, it does look neat. I'll probably get it just because I, I do like. <laughs> I know, I know, I, sh I can't believe it. But I have the make. This toys. is stupid. I hate it. Why is it here? I'm probably gonna buy it. Well, well, but I'm gonna get it to like taste the rainbow of the Star Scream toys in a way. You know, like it's very intentional. It's not like a, well, I don't want my, I don't want the NFP 52. I'm gonna get this instead. You know, like it's. It's to kind of, I might wait to see if they come out with like a weird deco of it and just get That's that. where I am. Like if they did a Sunstorm, maybe I'll pick it up in that, right? Because I'm already going to have three of this mold. That's the same reason I have the KFC Delta Magnus, right? right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it gives me some variety and I get the cool repaints and stuff. So like I would be interested in that just for the hell of it, but whatever. Like like if they did a black one, you know, like a like a black and gold. Like the E-Hobby. Yeah, yeah. Or... or you know, a deco that I've really wanted to see in one of these masterpieces is the MP3 deco, the the green screen, just as like a throwback. It'd be such a niche thing, like only a few people would would be into it. But they've done weird stuff like that. Before. They'd be like, "Why is Astro Storm colored wrong?" <laughs> That's that would be the response. <laughs> Kill me. Anyways, yeah, I've done. We'll see how this. Goes. I, I actually yeah. think it'll probably tank because uh, looking at it now that I have this in hand, like yeah. it has, it it's so much worse but like at, at first glance it looks like it could be the same toy if you're just looking at the robot and you're skimming yeah until you have this one in hand then it's obviously not I feel until i see point. the show z logo in i'm like oh a knockoff cool 
Now I know what we're talking about. I don't know. It just like if you're gonna get a third party Starscream, the, the action is with New Age right now. I mean, that is an amazing toy, and it's been out for there's a million different versions. Super awesome, completely different than this than this MP52. I would I would suggest that's that's the way you go from a from a hardcore. I don't. Know. I just don't know who sat down and said Make Toys has an MP seeker. Takara is about to come out with a new major redo. Let's do another one. Like I, I just don't know where that, that came from. Like literally challenge them head on, Uh-oh. and I guarantee you it's somebody that exists, and that's why it has some dumb deformation space name is because they don't want to get a C and D from Takara. Like if it's like, you know, X Transbots underneath or something, it's not X Transbots. But uh, someone call Christian because Shatterglass Jetfire just released photos. Wait, what? Right? Like it's, it's, yeah, it's in pulse? our it's in our Facebook chat. Oh, it's already in there. I just had I just yeah. you know just. Oh, that's hilarious. Christian, gotcha. At least the photos. I don't know if it was up, but somebody posted no, it, photos. It's just the photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's so, crazy. I mean, Christian's the one who posted them. So. Uh, that well, that is hilarious. Like that we that he, yeah. Just, Sorry. mere minutes ago, he told me he thought he knew what was going on. And what did I say? <laughs> I said we would get a shattered glass jet fire. There you go. At Five least decisions. We there. all knew that was coming. It was just that it was going to be released. Yeah. Revealed today. Right. So. Well, that's exciting. So I've, it makes me happy. But I love this toy. I think I think you and I are in agreement. Like we just like we were with MP44. You know, it's almost like we're like-minded in some way it's almost like we actually enjoy the line and enjoy collecting the line and can talk about it objectively as people that enjoy the line and what it's trying to do instead of people that feel they were shunted out of it and don't really like it anyways but feel the need to bitch about it everywhere it's almost it had been like if i'd been on the hasbro show today and just kept talking about how boring i thought all those exclusives were instead i excused myself from it (laughs) <laughs> you know, unless somebody dropped out, you know, now I would pitch it and I would have kept, kept that shit out too. And I, I, I feel like I might whenever, have... whenever we have these releases, like I, I really would love to check this toy out, you know? And so like, yeah. that's where like this and the same thing with that, that MP44, like I still haven't been able to really like play with that. Um, and, and so that's the thing is, is like, I don't necessarily know that I need to own those, you know, cause I have so yeah. many Optimus Primes and so many yeah. Starscreams, all that kind of thing. Like, but they look like it, it really tempts me. It, it doesn't, you know, whatever, $700 tempt me or whatever between getting both <laughs> those figures. But, um, you know, it's like, I, I like, I still really like, you know, the, uh, the line. I'd love to, you know, hopefully one of you guys bring that kind of stuff to TFCon. I can check it out. No, I'm not bringing my $440 Optimus Prime to TFCon so you can play with it. Hey, you already <laughs> broke it anyway, so. What would it yeah, take I for dropped you, Lucas? it for what it's worth to people who don't. I dropped it and broke a smokestack. That was totally my fault. I glued it back on. It's fine. What it would it take for you to buy this MP52, Lucas? This mold, like what, what can I what? do to get you into this toy no, today? I mean, we've we've already <laughs> talked about this. That my problem is is that if I were to get, you know, Masterpiece Starscream, I would have to get all the rest. And like that's my so, problem. You sound like you an alcoholic. I, I oh, a hundred percent. That's why I just had to cut it off cold jerky, man. I went through my ten step program and I'm. Uh, you know, enjoying it from afar. I think you're just, what I feel is like you're curious about the more complex engineering, but like you don't really like that in the toys you own and you don't want toys that are fully painted. Like, so like, it's not a line for you, but you're still like, right. I kind of want to see the engineering right. at least once, right? Just to, just to check well, it out. But the you know, it's, I it's had, a high price. like, yeah. I always enjoy doing it once. Like the same thing with like, you know, MP36 and like some of those figures. It's like, I enjoy doing you know, like getting through that transformation once, but like, it's not something where I'm like sitting on my couch watching Netflix that I'm like, all right, like let's pull out MP44. No, no, it's a, you gotta, you gotta look at it. <laughs> yeah. So Lucas, that's, that that's the trouble with, with, with some of that stuff. Whereas like, that's where like the older masterpieces like that, where you can just kind of fiddle with them and you know, it's, it's whatever. 
I disagree. I, I, I never felt any of them were fiddle bots, even then. Like, I think we've gotten a lot better where today, looking back, it's like, oh, this is so simple now. At the time, I thought they were all pretty mind blowing as they came out. It's just, we've gotten better. Yeah. Gamers have gotten better. You know what I mean? Like, Mario used to be hard. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's such a simple it's, game now. It's different. Like, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're easy, but they're always. Like, a lot of them are intuitive, and, and I don't know. I mean, again, like, I haven't transformed I find the, the new ones intuitive, but there's still much more yeah. steps. Like, MP44 yeah. is a lot of steps, but I still got through it without instructions, yeah. like, Man. for the most part. That's where we differ, Rob. Like, I am an instruction, like, fiend when it comes to these new Masterpiece toys. There is no way my grubby man hands are touching this thing unless I got the instructions right next to me unfold. I mean, like, See, I just... when, once I got to the cone head thing that needed to twist, I was like, I'm pretty sure this just twist. And at that point, I broke out the instructions because it didn't give. Right? Like, I didn't follow, but it's like, I'm confirming, okay, this is supposed to do that. And I'm like, it's still not fucking give. And then I go to YouTube, right? But, like, other than that, like, I, I put 90, 95% of it all together myself. And then I'll bust them out for, like, fine-tuning adjustments where, like, I'm not sure, Right. Uh, that type of stuff, but for the most part, I like to figure it out myself. See, I, I don't know. Like, I just can't do instructions myself. Like, I just have a really hard time with them, and that's where it's like I need those instructional videos uh, yeah. more than instru. Like, it just like whatever. It's hard those to picture doesn't... complex 3D movement on a 2D paper. Yeah, like it's hard to do, and to do it, like you got to go back to like the Beast Hunters instructions and the Thrilling Thirty instructions, where they're like a poster size. Right to get them large enough where you can see enough detail and to have enough steps in it to really see it. Ultimately, a video is going to be way better because right. you can see the three D space a lot better. It's just how it is. I, I, just, I just don't like walking on the wild side with that stuff. Yeah. I, I don't think Transformers. I mean, inherently they are a puzzle or a challenge, but like they don't have not, to be to everyone. Yeah, but that's how. That's when you get people like I broke my thing. This is bad quality. It's like, did 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 you? Like, is that what happened? Like, right. I broke um, a part on uh, MMC's Not Star Convoy um, because I wasn't using instructions and I forced something that I wasn't supposed to. And I was just like, well, that's my fuck up. The good news is, like, you can just kind of put it back and it's fine. And it holds its spot. It doesn't really affect anything. And I was just like, eh, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> you know, but it was totally my fault. I wasn't even mad. You know, it's like, well, shit, I did that to myself. But that well, that's happens the, that's the so right rarely, right? It's like, that almost never happens. Like, the amount of times I broke apart right. because I didn't use instructions, like, maybe one hand out of, you know, over my lifetime had, like, what, 4,000 Transformers pass through, you know, or something like that. So, you know, it's super rare. And, you know, yeah, I don't flip out about it, so... <laughs> All right. Well, um, you know, thanks guys for joining me. I'm glad that we were able to get our, our thoughts out here. Cause I know it's been, it's been, you know, kind of a lightning rod again, like with the community, just the people that are like, Oh, I like this better. I like that better and all that. And so I just thought it'd be fun to actually go through and kind of give our thoughts on, on the figures. It will yeah. happen with every masterpiece release ever, at least for, especially for G1 somewhat for beast wars but beast wars there's not comparisons yeah. you know there's like anybody they do for the rest of like the 84 to 86 cast somebody's gonna be like oh like fans toys and x transbots have versions of almost everything except some combiners out so like it's gonna keep happening and it'll be the same the same rhetoric over and over yeah i mean it's fun to do these where we talk about we focus on one toy it's not a review necessarily yeah. it's just a, a group think on it and hopefully the, yeah hopefully the viewers actually like that i i don't know i mean we're a little late on this one but you know we did unicron right away we did mp44 right away and that was a long time ago but um if you do like this stuff let us know comment and we'll you know, maybe we could make a sh special show out of it or just branch off out to my wallet or something who knows yeah cool um, we need the awesome. feedback or we don't know <laughs> He's awesome. I don't know. I'm super happy with him. It's. I was originally kind of lukewarm on buying this toy. I was like, I was like, I might as well, right? Because I mainly collect masterpiece. I'm gonna want the the coolest looking version. I, I know that. I was like, I guess I'll buy it. And then I got it in hand. I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm so glad I already got that. I'm getting Thundercracker and Skywarp. Like I completely turned around by the time I got it in hand. Um. So, yeah. Anybody else that actually likes the line, 
that was feeling the same, that's probably how you're going to end up. I don't know if you can buy it anymore anywhere. You know, I, think, I don't know. I think you can't. I don't think it's necessarily tough, and I don't think they've shot up and. I mean, masterpieces don't shoot up until they're gone. Yeah. You know, it t- and and like even MP44, sure, it's around like five hundred bucks now, but that was kind of almost retail, really. It depended where you got it. Yeah. So, but when it finally does disappear, it might like zoom up real quick. You just, yeah. Yeah, but just, they'll re-release it if that happens. You like most that's, of the ones they usually re-release if that. Not, not to get into reissues and what that definition is, but Takara does do a like for a lot of the mass has done later production runs of at least like the like the staple characters the main ones you know yeah, yeah like eventually that dies off right but you know as paul was saying but and they don't I, call those reissues usually they just call them like they're like reruns or yeah, something it's it's supposed to be 100 percent exactly the same and it never is <laughs> like the plastic's going to be mixed slightly different every time you can't avoid it like to some degree right like on that base core level but there's usually yeah, like a few other little things. Well, there's all, there's always tells in the package or something, to, so yeah. you so you could know like is this the first release, the second release? Because sometimes it matters. Like it really yeah. matters for for like MP9 with the knees stuff like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So and like, and if they did another production run of Hound, I bet you people there would the quality yeah. issues would be fixed if they were going to bother to do it. Or well, if I they think, weren't, it would be hilarious. I think everyone but, would like everyone would be like hold their breath until like the first person gets it and it's like wow this is so much better and then it's like ah it's like sells out like immediately <laughs> maybe they'll I, do I a, would... maybe they'll do a plus we haven't gotten a plus in a long time well i guess <laughs> skywarp and thundercracker are pluses but like in the in the vein that. Yeah. I know, it's so dumb they like do whatever the fuck they want but um it would be we haven't seen a plus in a while like hound should probably get like a toy deco plus that mm-hmm. is uh, I think fixed it Detritus, or how you pronounce that? The Junkion. Oh, do a whole new. Ca- they do the other character, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the only other hound I know of. I think they would do that before Toy Deco, but maybe not. What the fuck do I know? We'll see when and if they do it. And like, who are they going to repaint RC into? Not, I mean, I guess that's got to be Nightbird. Night Nightbird's Lifeline. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. All right. Well, thanks guys for joining me tonight. And um, I guess we'll see everyone next week. Thanks, guys. See you.